Since the beginning of the Russian invasion, almost 4 million Ukrainian refugees have fled their homes into neighboring Poland. The country has welcomed them warmly, and the government provides access to all social services. But at the same time, Poland has pulled the welcome mat from thousands of Middle Eastern migrants. Ali Rogan has the story of one Afghan refugee whose journey shows not all migrants are treated equally. Khaled Mohebi never wanted to leave Afghanistan. He had a good life as a software developer and coach of a computer programming team, a life made possible by peace. We were developing, you know, we, nobody think about it that one day Taliban will come back because nobody um, uh, support them. But they did come back as the United States withdrew last August. Khaled worked for an American company. He knew he had to flee. He had a U.S. visa, but like so many Afghans, was turned away at the Kabul airport. So he began an almost 3,000-mile journey by car. He made it to Iran and from there flew to Moscow in mid-September, where his programming team was set to compete a few months later. But after the games, Russia wanted to send them back. Khaled's Russian contacts suggested he traveled to Poland on foot through Belarus. They asked us to go there illegally. We said, oh, why? We are educated. We are uh, from national team. We can go anywhere illegally. Why we, we do it? And why we play a game with our life? But he realized Russia was willing to play that game. So Khaled and his friends devised a plan. Two days before our visa expired, we bought some jackets and we traveled there. And we were we thought that, okay, when we arrive to the Polish border, we will show our documents and everything, and they will help us. But Khaled didn't know that Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, an ally of Russia's Vladimir Putin, was playing his own dangerous game, luring migrants from the Middle East and South Asia, then pushing them to the borders of his Western neighbors. The group arrived at the Polish border in mid-October, walking straight into the no-man's land of a hybrid war, facing barbed wire and armed guards. They hid in the wilderness for four days, then tried to escape back to Belarus, but were caught. They uh, shocked me by electric shock, and uh, hunter dog, uh, by hunter dog, dog uh, cats destroyed this part of my jacket and uh, my face and hand. And uh, finally, the, the soldier fired um, 10 or 5 centimeter distance with my head by gun. They said, OK, now we, don't, we didn't kill you, so you have another chance. You can go to the Poland. Don't come back. And we saw, oh, how? Because we didn't have food, water. We didn't eat anything for four days. But he still had his smartphone with a little bit of power left. So he posted an SOS on Facebook, writing, there is a cold war between Belarus and Europe, and we are the cannon fodder. I received messages from all around the world. One message was from Polish journalist Andrzej Meller, who had lived for years in Afghanistan, but recently moved back to a small town on the Polish-Belarus border. I got a message from Herat, from a friend, who wrote to me that few of his Afghan friends, uh, IT engineers, they are somewhere in the middle of the jungle uh, at the border between Poland and Belarus. So he asked me, uh, Andrzej, I think you live there. There is a kind of a war there. Uh, could you help them? Meller also called Fundacja Ocaleni, a Polish volunteer group dedicated to helping migrants. We decided that we will call, uh, we will do it officially, legally. We will call the border guard uh, and they will ask for asylum in Poland. At the same time, uh, local television uh, and other media, radio, will come to the spot. By the time the volunteers and cameras reached Khaled and his friends, they had been in the woods eight days, all near death. Khaled was better than them, I think. We, we asked them to kill us, please, the soldiers. Please kill us, finish this, this story, but they did it. He was really brave. It looked like he was taking responsibility for the for the whole whole group on some on some level. Mariana Vartetska was among the volunteers who met Khaled. They gave us food, water, uh, uh, and clothes and uh, everything. And I can't forget that. And I I swear there. Uh, okay, I will help other guys like them 
one day because you know they were like angel they they arrived there and they saved us mariana told khaled he'd have to go with the polish border guards to apply for protection he asked me if i could promise him that it was going to be okay i remember uh, his face and his eyes when i uh, when i had to tell him that uh, I, I couldn't promise him uh, that it was going to be okay because I didn't know that. But the guards' behavior towards Khaled changed when they had an audience. This time it was different, you know. They didn't push us back to the Belarus and they act very normal and standard, like we are good police and uh, we will not send you back. Once Khaled applied for international protection, he spent a few weeks in a refugee camp. And a few weeks later, he moved in with a family in Warsaw and applied for a work permit. When we spoke, he had recently moved into his own apartment. But Khaled's journey is not over. Just a few weeks after our interview, he learned he wouldn't get an update on his work permit until October due to the influx of Ukrainian refugees. He was running out of money, so he left for Germany, where he has a job offer and better prospects for a work permit. And he lives in a refugee camp he says is much nicer than the one in Poland. Mariana Vartetska says Poland is still treating non-Europeans at the border harshly, while Ukrainians receive a warm welcome. I am very, uh, very happy that they are getting the help they needed. I think uh, that's that's how it should look like in a situation like this. But it is very frustrating when you uh, when you compare it to how badly the asylum seekers on the Belarusian border are treated. But that hasn't stopped Khaled from trying to pay his good fortune forward. When he was in Poland, he volunteered at a shelter for Ukrainian refugees. After everything you have been through, where do you find the ability and the desire to help Ukrainian refugees? When you uh, help somebody, a refugee, and when you see he's uh, happy and a smile, it will, you know, it will uh, send you a positive energy and it will help me too. Even while his own future in Europe is uncertain, Khaled is already making good on his pledge to help others like him. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Ali Rogan.